Lesson 1. World War I and the 1920s. I will know how events in the first two decades of the 1900s affected life in Texas. Vocabulary. Alliance. Suffrage. Conserve. Jazz. Bond. Prejudice. Interest. Before 1920, women were denied the right to vote. Posters pointed out how unfair this was. Design and draw a poster that you think would have helped women win the right to vote. Far across the ocean, in 1914, war broke out in Europe. Britain, France, Italy, and Russia formed an alliance. An alliance is a formal agreement of friendship between countries. These four countries were known as the Allied Powers. Germany, Austria-Hungary, and the Ottoman Empire, or Turkey, formed the Central Powers. World War I. President Woodrow Wilson asked the people of the United States not to take sides in the war. Then in 1915, a German submarine sank a British passenger ship, the Lusitania. More than 1,100 people died, including 128 Americans. Though angry, the United States still did not declare war. German naval attacks on merchant and other ships increased. In April 1917, the United States joined the Allied Powers to fight Germany and the Central Powers. Texans go to war. World War I had a big impact on life in Texas and the nation. Millions of Americans joined the armed services to fight the Central Powers. More than 20,000 of them were women who went to Europe to serve as nurses. Nearly 200,000 Texans also joined up. Among them were 450 women nurses. The new soldiers needed training. The United States set up camps where they could learn new skills and work as a team. In Texas, the largest included Camp MacArthur at Waco, Camp Logan at Houston, Camp Travis at San Antonio, and Camp Bowie at Fort Worth. Training for officers took place at Leon Springs. Airplanes came into common use during World War I. Many new pilots trained in San Antonio. At Kelly Field, more than 1,500 men learned to fly. Thousands more learned how to be airplane mechanics. Pilots also trained at the nearby Stinson School of Flying. Marjorie Stinson, a licensed pilot, had founded the school. She, her sister Catherine, and her brothers all helped run it. 2. Texas during World War I. World War I also had an impact on life at home in Texas. More food for soldiers and supplies for the armed forces were needed to win. But as farmers became soldiers and left their fields, food shortages occurred. The Texas farmers who stayed behind worked hard to grow more food crops and meet the demand. The United States government then purchased these agricultural products from Texas and other states. People throughout the country and in Texas volunteered to help the war. Millions conserved food. To conserve means to limit the use of something in order to protect from waste or overuse. People followed a plan set out by the United States Food Administration. They volunteered to cut down on sugar and meat every day. Many Texas families grew their own vegetables. That way, more canned foods could be sent to soldiers. People also took jobs that helped the war. Texas's refineries produced oil products that were bought by the United States government for the war. Raising livestock and packing meat was also important. Women went to work in factories, taking jobs that soldiers left behind. Some worked for volunteer groups such as the Red Cross. Many people helped the government raise money for the war by buying Liberty Bonds. A bond is a document received in exchange for money. People return the bond at a certain date and get back their money with interest. Interest is money earned at a regular rate for the use of money lent. The war ended in 1918. The Allied powers had won, but the cost was great. More than 5,000 Texans died while serving in the armed forces. Women's Rights Issues 
Even as women supported the war, many continued to fight for their own rights. For many years, women had called for suffrage. Suffrage is the right to vote. In the early 1900s, women were not allowed to vote in national or in Texas elections. To gain their rights, Texas women became voluntarily active in civic affairs at state and local levels. Jesse Daniel Ames grew up in Texas. She founded the Texas League of Women Voters in 1919. She brought African American and white women together to work for suffrage. Mary Eleanor Brackenridge supported many women's rights issues, including suffrage. She was the first woman in Bexar County to register to vote when Texas made it legal in 1918. But women still could not vote in national elections. Also in 1918, Texas elected its first woman to statewide office. Annie Webb Blanton was a college teacher and an author who believed in equal rights for women. She became Texas's first female state superintendent of public instruction. In 1920, the United States finally ratified, or gave consent to, the 19th Amendment of the United States Constitution. This law granted women citizens across the country the right to vote in all elections. The Roaring Twenties It was an era of progress. Life changed quickly for Texas and the United States during the 1920s. The experience of war and the issue of women's equality had an impact on people's lives in Texas and the nation. It changed people's views. Society was becoming more modern. Businesses developed and grew. Today we call this period the Roaring Twenties. Between 1920 and 1929, the free enterprise system helped industries and cities grow rapidly. Factories that had made products for World War I turned to making things people would buy. To keep up with the demand, they hired more workers. More people had more jobs and money than ever before. Many people bought their own homes. Progress also meant having the latest inventions. Radios, telephones, and refrigerators were popular. New technology made the automobile more affordable. People began to use more oil and gas than ever before. In Texas, the oil industry boomed. Using Texas oil, gasoline companies built more oil refineries. By 1928, Texans owned more than a million cars and trucks. Cities and states built better roads for vehicles. The paved highways encouraged people to travel more. New businesses developed to meet the needs of drivers. Gas stations and motorist hotels, or motels, became more common. The Jazz Age During the 1920s, American cities grew at a fast pace. Farmers left their land and took factory jobs. The price for farm products had dropped. Many farmers could no longer earn a living on the land. They moved to cities to look for jobs. The cities moved to a fresh new beat, jazz. Jazz is a type of music started in African-American communities. Its exciting, strong rhythms gave the 1920s another nickname, the Jazz Age. People looked for new things to do and new ways to have fun. The ragtime music of Texas-born musician Scott Joplin was popular. In Deep Ellum, a Dallas neighborhood, people went to nightclubs to dance and listen to live music. Deep Ellum was a center for jazz and blues music. The blues gave voice through song to the experiences of African Americans in the South. Texas blues singer Blind Lemon Jefferson recorded more than 100 songs. Radio and movies played a role in entertainment too. Many families in Texas and other states gathered around the radio after dusk. They heard news reports, radio plays, comedy shows, and musical programs. At the picture show, people watched black and white silent movies. Not until the late 1920s did the first major talkie, or a movie with sound, come out. It was called The Jazz Singer. 6. Summer Troubling Times Despite the good times of the 1920s, there were plenty of hard times as well. 
African Americans throughout the United States faced very unfair treatment. Many Southern blacks traveled to cities in the North hoping to find equal opportunity for work. They found factory jobs but poor working conditions. They faced racism and intolerance. At the same time, the Ku Klux Klan, or the KKK, grew stronger in Texas. They wanted to deny African Americans their rights. The beliefs of the KKK were based on prejudice and hatred. Prejudice is a strong opinion formed without facts. However, many Americans, both white and black, opposed the KKK. Politicians like Miriam Ma Ferguson and other Texans helped to defeat KKK members trying to win elections. Miriam Ferguson became the first Texas woman elected governor in 1924. She ran for office and won after her husband, who had also been governor, was forced out of office. When Ma Ferguson took office as governor, the KKK weakened, losing members and power.